<laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Is this good news or bad news? Is something wrong? What? What? I just had a feeling that you had some bad news or something. I don't know. No, actually, I have great news. Um, I just need advice. I, I just, I, I actually, I just wanted a different perspective on a pivotal change that I've been reflecting on and thinking about, and also just some, some kind of advice on things that you probably have more experience in. Like I'm selling my car, and I, I don't know, I don't know how to sell a car. Um, but the thing is, uh, I'm selling my car, but I'm selling it for a thousand three hundred dollars. And I called my dad and I was like, I'm selling my car. And he was like, you could have got 2000. And he started screaming at me. And then he was being really passive aggressive and jabby. And then I hung up the phone. And so I felt this guilt of like, maybe I should have sold it for more. And so I have like 20 people wanting to buy my car. And then I'm buying my, I'm selling my car to buy this van. But then I'm unsure if I like, now I'm feeling, I'm feeling doubts about the van because my car is so reliable. But I also, why the fuck would I, why do I keep buying vehicles? I don't even have my license. <laughs> And what kind of advice do you want? <laughs> um, okay. I, should have I? You, I have I, you I, sold I, the car? I have someone driving past it today. I'm actually, I'm kind of nervous because this guy that's friends with Dante and Tom and lives in Souk is driving past it and he wants to get it for his daughter. Um, and it's his daughter's first car. And it was my first car. So I'm like, I want to, I want to pass that on. And if I can give them a deal and, you know, the dad's looking out to make sure it's a good car for his daughter and something like that. I mean, I had my grandpa and my uncle look at the car before I bought it. And if I can pass the car on energetically to the same kind of energy that I got the car, I think that'd be amazing. So I'm okay selling it for that price. The only problem is it's parked right now where a tree is. And so if the guy pulls out to like, go look at the car, I feel like tree, she's going to be like, Hey, we're having a garden party. <laughs> And I feel like I, I feel like I might not sell my car to this person I want to sell it to you because of tree. Uh, <laughs> also, David's had my car all month, and so I have to get my car back, and I have to fucking deep clean my car from whatever disaster David did to it. And <laughs> yeah. also, I don't know. I wanted to get I wanted to get a van, and I wanted to convert it and put like wood panels and make it really nice and like stained wood and stuff and put a bed in the back and then take it as like an adventure mobile for the summer and stuff at my apartment. Um, but I'm also kind of nervous to do that. I don't know. Do you have identified the van? Like I know the van. So the van is a GMC, GMC, it's in the, it's from like the eighties. It's like 84, um, all wheel drive. Uh, and it's blue, and it's got a salmon sticker on it, and it's got the paint chipping off. And my friend's partner um, lives at this punk house, and they were selling the van uh, at this punk house. And, and it was just parked in the back. And he was originally selling it for 600 but then he got a new battery, and so it's 800 um, but I'm, there's a lot of kind of stuff going on with the van. And I was very like, like, I don't know, rose colored glasses, like this is the one. Um, but when I was driving it for the first time, it stalled and then it just stopped in the middle of the driveway. <laughs> and so I'm selling my reliable car for this van that I don't know. But the thing is the guy bought the van for, I think 2000, a couple years ago. And then he put $3,000 of work into it. Oh, wow. So there's just like a couple little things about it. Like sometimes the doors don't open or like the windows take a while to roll up. Um, but all of it has been kept really well. Uh, the only problem is the guy that is, he bought a new van. And so he hasn't driven it in two years. And so he was just going to scrap it. And then his friend was like, no, it's okay. So they were going to sell it to me. And since my friend knows the guy that lives there and stuff like that, he never posted it online and he never said he was going to sell it to anyone else except me. Okay. Well, so I mean then I'm thinking... I'm selling my car for $1,300, but I'm buying like this $6,000 car with the money. So I feel like that's a good deal. Yeah. Sound, sound good. Sound but also, good. I mean, I don't even have my license. To get any van that's workable under a grand, you're doing well. Like, especially okay. all wheel drive. Yeah. I mean, it, how many kilometers are on it? I think like the same kilometers as my car. So like 250. Yeah, so, okay, so if it's under 300,000, you know, that it's 36 years old, you know, that's, that's not bad. Um, did you look at, what's the red book or what is it, black book, blue book, red book or something? 
there's there's an actual book that gives appraisal like what things are worth. Mm. And you can maybe look online or something for the what things. But but it, I mean, from what you're telling me, you know, if you got the inside track, it wasn't put up for sale. It was sitting there like three thousand dollars. That's probably pretty good because a lot of times cars sit there because you know there's 10 things that need to be fixed and mm -hmm. and you buy it now you're fucked because you got to put a, like three or four grand into it right mm -hmm. um, if you trust your friends or you think they're not trying to shaft you well the guy was super nice like i he texted me and was like told me any little issue that was with the van he said he could take it diagnosed for me um if i wanted it but that might be a little bit more on the price uh, I hung out with him for two hours and we went through the van and like looked at all the little quirks and he fixed things up. We went for a drive together. We hung out for a bit. Like, you know, I don't think anyone's trying to like really. Like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that sounds good. I, you know, for it's an automatic. Yeah. And it stalled in the middle. Like it just stopped going. Yeah. That's but that's also because it hasn't been regularly dri regularly driven in two years. Right. Um, and it, it got a new battery, and the guy said he drove it around town all day the next day with the new battery, and there was no issues. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. I sounds good, man. I don't know. I don't know anything about cars. I have like 20, you know, what? I posted a picture of my car. I didn't know that this was weird until someone pointed it out to me, but I posted, I only posted one picture of my car when I put it up for sale and it was my car in a ditch with me laughing in a tow truck. <laughs> and uh, someone sent me a message being like, did you steal this car? And I was like, what you, well, they said, why are you selling it? And I was like, I don't know. I can't even drive. You see that picture of it in the ditch? And, and they were like, um, did you steal it? And I was like, no. And so I had this long night. And, I was like, and then I talk, was talking to Nigel. And he's like, what? Why the fuck did you? Like, you know, the only picture you posted it was in a ditch. But I got like 20 people wanting to buy it. But I mean, I got 20 people wanting to buy a car where I posted a picture of it in a ditch. So, I mean, it's a it's a hit it's a hit but well, i'm also I mean, it's my first car and i know i have a lot of i have I, i'm sad to let go of that car because i love that car i mean every time every time i went out with that car everyone was like i love your car everyone was like can i have your car some people were like can i can i have your car can i borrow your car i love your car and like cool stickers and like that car was a hit that car is that car is a hit it's a well, it's have, have you person. sold it no and when's the person coming over tomorrow i have like five people wanting to come view it tomorrow Don't like everyone sort of one thing I would say is everyone sort of always tries to negotiate down. Like no one's tried to negotiate down with me. I'm honestly, I'm selling it. I'm only selling it for a thousand three hundred. I'm not going down because that's no, 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 I I'm, just, I'm, just, what I'm just saying is don't go any lower because it, I mean, it sounds like you priced it too low. Um, and that's why you're getting so much interest. Like it's hard to find. Well, I didn't know that. because I thought everyone's broke like me. I thought a thousand three hundred dollars is a lot for people. No, but it doesn't matter. Other people have 10 grand in the bank. They're not like you, right? You can't think of the value of the car based upon how much money you have. <laughs> well, I needed to sell it quickly so I could get the van because he said that he was going to put an ad up next week because it's already been a couple of weeks that I've been telling him I was going to okay, get well, it. That's, I get that. I mean, the thing is, you've already set the price. The van's there. Just do it. I mean, do it. But I'm also, I'm scared because I mean, what if the van's terrible on gas? My car is already terrible on gas. I'm letting go of it, an entire entire history of that car, which was so fun. I love that car. And I, I'm actually, I'm letting go of a very big attachment I have to something that's very dear to me to bring in something new that I don't even know is going to be as reliable. Well, the, but the thing is, you're not, the reason you're getting a van is for lifestyle change. Yeah. So, and so that's why I'm like, oh, maybe not. I don't know. Because I got I got that fear that's like, oh, yeah. maybe you should just, you know, like not do anything. You I know, mean, keep your car, keep your apartment, keep your life. You know, it's fine. It's fine. Don't make any changes. It's well, <laughs> I mean, you do have a stable apartment. Um, you know, going on the I mean, going on the road is fun. It's not fun if your car is always breaking down. Um, I would definitely get BCA if you don't have it. You get yeah. Five, you get four free toes or whatever like that. Uh, so it's worth it um i don't know like i mean definitely it's a risk right i mean you're on the one hand you got reliable car reliable apartment on the other hand you've got living in a van that could break down but you're you're living the life kind of thing 
Yeah, and I've also I've never been a stable person up until the last year. I'm getting really fed up. I'm getting really fed up of my own shit. Like I, I really thrive in a more nomadic space. Um with things with a lot more freedom and a lot less areas to pull. I just want to be able to just, you know, roll out of my car in the sun and like lie on the grass and just not want to give a fuck anymore. Like I just want to be like passing through everything and just this like very Yeah, you've been through a lot and you said you want you want some changes, so you know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel if I say anything and something goes wrong, then I'm the person who suggested it. But um, I... I'm open to suggestions. Well, just, I mean, you've told me the info. You know the risk. Um, the money that you get and the difference. You know, if there's something wrong with the van, you got 500 extra bucks. You know, you can put it in. You know, you might have to... There might be something you might have to replace, maybe. But the battery, mm -hmm. a lot of things, yeah, it's usually the battery um you know you, you are a nomad man i mean i don't know what the fuck i'm doing I, honestly when i was in nanaimo last week i was like i don't know what's going on like why do i feel like i'm having a breakdown i'm like because i'm not staying true to myself with anything i'm trying i'm like i'm in this city i'm in this world and i'm in this different energy and i've been trying to morph myself into it and I, I feel like I'm not growing as a person I am because I'm trying to grow into all these little areas and fits and shapes so I can, you know, fill in the gaps or, you know, be this other person or, you know, try to fit in when none of this is actually anything that I wanted. And I just was like, you know, my family's all like, oh, we're doing, you're so proud of you. You're doing so well. You're so stable. And I'm like, yeah, but like, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> I'm joining you. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I understand. I mean, I have the same, I go through the same thing every year, right? I mean, this is, I'm staying in a kind of stable environment, but I got like a lot of work I got to do because I know as soon as I go on the road, good luck. You know, it's different. It's, it's, it's a much different experience. It's present moment flow right now. I'm just yeah. schedule life. So, and it's like, what am I, like, uh -huh. well, <laughs> just, I mean, the thing is, it's COVID time. So, I mean, it might be good because all the parks, nobody's in there. Like, maybe there's tons of room ready to go. I mean, you've got Jorge and Kyle waiting for you. So I think the fleet, the Planetary Guardian fleet is, is waiting. I feel like there's so much fun for me to be had. And I, I've just been, I've been slacking. I've been slacking on it. You know, it's funny. I asked my friend uh, who was at the blockade. I'm like, did you ever meet Kyle when you're at the blockade? And they're like, oh, the guy that was taking money out of the GoFundMe to pay for his insurance. And I was like, what? Did he? Yeah, I guess that's why he got kicked out. You're one of the reasons. But they, like, the thing is, they have like three to 500,000 bucks, I heard. Like, where did all that, where's all that money going? And if Kyle, like, and how did Kyle have access to the funds? <laughs> I, I honestly, I thought about it. It makes sense for him to have if, because when, when he was at the blockade full time, he was the only person full time at Eating Cap. It would make yeah. sense for him to have to pay his insurance because he's holding the fort down and he's unable to get it full time work. Yeah. But I, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, if you're the only guy up there and you're using your vehicle, and all of a sudden you have no insurance, you know, I, I, I would say that's that's worthy of it. Um, maybe, maybe not a full year, but. No, I don't know. I'm also, I'm also nervous to live in a van after what happened with Jordan being homeless. Well, I mean, the thing is, I mean, you have parents. I mean, you're, you know, you're a much different person. I mean, he's he's in Vancouver. I mean, I did you see the video this morning? He had the video this morning? He drew his name on his van. He set fire to his arm. Oh yeah, yesterday, yeah. I didn't see that till this morning. I, I, <laughs> like, like it's funny that maybe it's not funny, but we can we can basically show the world our downward spiral. <laughs> like we're just you know. I, I thought I found that very iconic. I was sitting with Nigel actually and I was like, I think Jordan's having a mental breakdown on Facebook Live. <laughs> and he was like, huh. And I was just like, all right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The show is in. <laughs> and you know what's funny is in the video is one of my cards. 
Like the, and it was a big. I, I said I was watching that live, and I sent you a message. I was like, "You should check in with Jordan." That's what that's what I told you. And he, I, the, my favorite thing about that video is he he puts the picture of the car, and he goes, "This is my life purpose," and that's what he that's what he says right after. And he's like sitting in the car. And, it's like oh, the the team, <laughs> the team. I mean, every nearly everyone on the team was having a breakdown. It's like you kind of I start to wonder about things, you know, <laughs> like, is this my choice of people? Is this me as a result of being a somewhat teacher coach? Like <laughs> their combination of this thing. Like well, all of a sudden you go in a van and now you're you're trapped somewhere. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it is, I always thought the very secret plan is a comedy show. So, I mean it's happening whether you know I mean, usually there's someone at the brunt of the humor right like somebody's i feel like to be a part of the very secret plan you need to have a mental breakdown yeah. like, you know, like, i think when kyle was first recruited you know he was fucking <laughs> barefoot salt spring riding around his skateboard and like sleeping in abandoned buildings and like crawling out and like having sex with everyone after and like, <laughs> I, I just i can see you in like two weeks there's a fleet of jorge and you and kyle and you guys are surrounded by the cops you guys all go to jail and your dad then you go to the hospital with jordan and everyone in the plan is in the, is in the hospital we're all like, uh, uh, we're all calling you for, we're all doing a Zoom meeting together from different parts of the psych ward. <laughs> and you're all using the tools. I think my, uh, the guards are using a jab and a, uh, I, I tried my enrollment conversation, but they just wouldn't come. And... I was sitting with a psychiatrist and I kept telling her that she was doing combo killers. I was throwing the cards at her. She didn't understand. <laughs> She's unable to synergize with me. Day one. <laughs> yeah. Day two. I asked. I asked my family if they could come for a visit, but I asked them to bring a board. I've gotten everyone in the psych ward <laughs> to get through the plan. Seems like they're only people that understand it. Weird. <laughs> synergize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to take my meds and I'm not 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 I'm making sure no one else takes their meds in the psych ward too. We've all been flushing them down the toilet. But suddenly we figured out how to we all figured out the very secret plan. <laughs> and our fearless leader. As soon as we get out, we're we're gonna start spreading the word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, so they'll be like sitting online and being like, no, I'm working on a plan to get you guys out. And we'll be like. <laughs> I mean, I, I've had that happen. I mean, I've, I've had people who, you know, they asked me to come to the island to, to pick them up and take them away because their boyfriend went psychotic kind of thing. I uh, took a First Nations elder away from Vancouver to the Olympics because he thought he was going to be attacked by the RCMP. I've done a few secret missions with people as part of my planetary guardian service to the world. Anyway, I think I, I got to get running here. Uh, yeah, I got to nice, go. Nice to check in yeah. with Super Agent Brick Bond. And uh, we shall talk soon. Yeah, okay, bye. All right, see you.